There might be something there. All right, snap keeping this. Oh, actually, yeah, I guess I'll... Yeah, this, deck, this hand kind of does want to draw, like, black card plus land. It's a lot better on seven cards. Turn one Ragavan. It's pretty good against my hand, too. So many decisions here. Okay, so we take the iteration and the drown. And then I think we we have to take the hit from the Ragavan, but then we can Solitude, exile the Ragavan and the Channeler with another Ephemerate. Rocks, Warmonk. Is Warks, Warmonk any good? I do kind of have a soft spot for Bant Charm. Okay. So we Solitude, Exile the Creatures. And then the Rebound Ephemerate gives us a little bit of insurance against them putting Lurus in their hand this turn. You can't cast Solitude with the trigger on the stack of Ephemerate? No, because you ca it, the, the Ephemerate's on the stack. When you resolve the Ephemerate rebound, you need to target a creature. And so if you respond by uh, by evoking Solitude, then it will become, uh, it'll you'll sacrifice it before you get to um, actually get to do anything with it. You can block with Grief, then cast Solitude with Ephemerate on the stack. I mean, I didn't want to block with the Grief there. On the, on the Ragavan on turn two, is that when you wanted to block with Grief? Yeah, you can, you can, you can spin five mana to cast Solitude. That does work. Lurus in hand and Death Shadow cast. I think I'm attacking here. Seems to not draw a black card to get the Lurus out of the hand. Ah, don't have blue mana. Definitely not the best small again. Let's pass back. Probably losing this game. The attack seems a little sus. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. It's like, we're at, we're at a really high life total. I know we grow the death shadow, but like this is all we have going down to our creatures. So if we just stop the aggression... I feel like we just lose. It's not like the shadow's like never getting any bigger by itself. And if we can, you know, draw like answers to Luris, uh, then all of a sudden, I feel like we get we get in there. Maybe not. All right, blue mana. If I draw blue mana, I'm probably gonna evoke the Moldrifter. Interesting. So if I attack with Solitude, they block with Death Shadow, we persist. We lose if they drill Drown. If I attack with both, they take three from Solitude, double block Grief with Death Shadow Ragavan. It's not that good. Do you want the 20 second land? Maybe, yeah. Don't hate it. I mean, them taking this is also like, you know, not the end of the world, right? Could maybe have pitched Persist to Grief? Probably not. Surveil so croaks into the graveyard. Trying to figure out how we win this game. Probably starts with like Blue Saurus into Mending into Ephemerate. Something like that. Oh, they get to escape Kroxa. I think I'll pack it into that. Wait, game two. 
Probably not a great matchup, to be honest. I think I will cut the Griefs and then bring in the fourth Prismatic Ending, the two copies of Fatal Push, the fourth to Fairy. And then I can play the first Explosives, the Sarah's Emissary, which I don't like that much. I'll just play the first Explosives. The 2-2 two -two split of Chapel and Seacrum Coast seems a little weird. Uh... A little weird. Like, I think that people don't play enough fast lands in these decks uh, to be able to cast Ending or Ephemerate on turn one. So if I'm going to have, like... and I want, So I want an untapped white dual land on turn one with the Sea Chrome Coasts. Uh, I could maybe be playing Isolated... Ch or I could be potentially playing uh, Courtyard over Chapel, but... I didn't want to have infinite tap, in infinite fast lands... Yeah, because we have 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13 white sources on turn 1. Which is pretty good. Wait, this is 61? Okay, sorry. Uh, sorry, just to cut the explosives. I thought we were at 59. Spurs thought you would have 4 mana on turn 4 very often. Mm, I mean, definitely some amount of the time. I, I could definitely see going up to the 22nd land. Adding like the first courtyard. I'm not sure exactly what we cut though. Spider plays 23. I've played 22 and like got flooded a lot when I was playing this list a bunch. Cutting the fourth grave. Yeah, we could do that. That's probably the cut. I think I'm on board for that change. I'll play the first courtyard. I think I like not fetching. that end value it's pretty bad against lantern but i think i'm gonna i think i just have to cast this i could maybe have gotten rights because i'm gonna because i have the mold drifter this is higher upside it just lets me draw persist at any point right seismic eight months thank you so much so imagine they take the teferi here yeah and so let's go evoke mold drifter off the plains Okay, so now we can unmark grave for rights. It's pretty slow though. What about cutting the second rights over the fourth grave? I really like with with uh, prisma with uh, mending. I really like the second rights. Is mending better? Can unmark grave be used as grief? Um. Could yeah, we could maybe cut the four? I think I think mending is better. Mending is like mending lets you like loot away the extra griefs and stuff too. I'm on board for this though. Torpor Orb. Hmm. Okay, good draw then. I guess I could have played my land to play around Flusterstorm, but I'd honestly like. I probably would rather than Flusterstorm the ending than the rights. Yeah, we should. We can also clean up the basics too a bit. Although I don't, I might not have the basic planes in this art. We'll figure it out later. Right, if they have Flusterstorm, they have Flusterstorm. I'm just jamming here. They don't have it. Think Dread Return would be a safe unban now that Bridge is axed. Um, Dread Return is like pretty good in Dredge still probably. They discard on Holy Heat, so they probably have a second one, right? Uh, it's probably an interesting conversation. If uh, if it's safe to unban. 
They don't. Okay, they discarded Unholy Heat. Okay. But they didn't heat end of turn. I guess this is for life total considerations. Is there any consideration for gifts? I feel like the deck has, like, like specifically Solitude and Grief. They, do, they These cards do give you, like, big, like, four or five mana top decks, right? So I feel like gifts is a bit worse when you play these cards. CPT, I uh, think for the five pack, it's really nice of you. Appreciate it. Okay. Just gonna get the Luris gone. Could hold this to loot away. I think I'll play it out. We're getting close to Hardcast Archon. <laughs> For the basics, I gotcha. <laughs> I guess I'll have to change it now. Okay, we can bounce that with Teferi. Oh, yeah, yeah, because, yeah, Ubisoft spells, I think, means you can't advantage every turn. Deck becomes, like, a lot more consistent. All right. Let's go, dude. What a draw off the Teferi. Let's go. Oh, my gosh. That was sick. <laughs> and we got to we made them discard the orb too. Orb is really good against us. I'm gonna use the restroom real quick. Be right back. Okay, we've come back to a good hand, huh? Definitely scary on the draw against the old Ragged Man deck. But have no fear, Fatal Push is here. And I got a Kit Kat. Best case scenario, they just cast Kroxa here. Not gonna solitude this. I might solitude if they dash this turn, because then they can't have Drown in the lockup. Was it not better to cast Fatal Push when they come and play Drown Dash? No, they're they're a deck that plays counter spells. Like I, I, I like I I much I much happier if they dash on turn two than getting my Fatal Push Fluster Stormed. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of like I think people play around Dash Ragavan too often and lose to like Fluster Storm too often. Uh, I guess I'll discard the Mending. At least that's my stance. So we don't get an ETB trigger. And, you know, my opponent does not have Delirium for Heat on the Archon, though. So I'm, I'm optimistic, I'll say. I <laughs> would prefer four. It's okay. Let me get uh, some basics bot. But I can't switch mid-league. I'll just have them match the island. I was thinking that I was probably going to play Rack most of today, so I didn't end up doing this this morning, unfortunately. But you usually like to have the basics look good. Terminate? Yeah, they could have Terminate in their hand. Um, but maybe they won't have anything, huh? Let's be optimistic. <laughs> the Desperation Heats. Did they find Delirium? Did they find Delirium? They're not immediately putting in the graveyard. I feel like there's no way, there's no way they have Delirium. They put Kroxa in the yard. Heat resolves. They can have Lightning Bolt here. 
Now they have to attack with Chandler. Uh, blocking is not uh, in our best interest, though. Sorry, getting the, some basics. Thank you, Fix. Lurus in the hand. Let's freaking go, dude. So I think we just start off an attack with the Archon. I could bounce this first so they have to sack Ragavan. I guess that's fine. Remember, Solitude's ETB is still currently turned off. Okay, but now we have Prismatic Ending. But they, they, they do also have to... They have to answer the Archon, so we can actually flash in Solitude end of turn for a potential sneaky kill here. Yeah, a lot of people ask me why no Graveyard Hate and Jeskai Murktide, but you have Path to Exile and Teferi for opposing Murktide Regents. You have Prismatic Ending for Kroxa. You have Counterspells for Living In and Reanimator. So really, the only things you're soft to with no Graveyard Hate is like Phoenix and Dredge, and neither deck is really popular at the moment. So it's not my opinion that you need Graveyard Hate. I really don't like the two path and just get Murktide. Well, it, they're, the path exiles are almost entirely in the sideboard for opposing Murktide regions. Um, if you don't feel like, and I think that those are the best sideboard cards for those matchups. If you disagree, you can make an angry TikTok. But I, I think I've been liking them. And I say this as like maybe Modern's preeminent uh, Path to Exile hater. Yeah, I've been playing Blossoming Calm in my Just Guy Phoenix sideboard. Yeah, definitely good against Burn and Endurance. Definitely where you want it. I guess they're just dead anyways, but... a main deckable card I think I'm just going to go for the mending on turn 2 here if I play Delver in standard uh, not in this standard Saga Blade cool cool yeah, good against Affinity. Yeah, but, but like it, it is it is good in these matchups. Like, and I, I think it's that makes it you know a very good sideboard card. Okay, my opponent has Cauldra in the hand here. I'm not too worried about Cauldra at the moment. <laughs> when did this become Ephemerate deck? Uh after I played against the I played against an Abzan Ephemerate version of this deck in the PTQ on Friday. I was pretty impressed by it. So if we don't draw Persist, then we do probably get our Archon Lantern, which is a bit of a problem. So let's just draw Persist. Uh, and Grief first, just in case they have protection. Why is no one talking about how good Emissary is against Storm or Belcher? Uh... I mean, I, I don't. Is it? Is, it's probably fine against Belcher, but if they, if they have any answer to it, they can't. They stack their deck to stop it from being good. So I guess I take the Thought Monitor here. They can't cast the Rebuke. Okay, I'm totally fine if they needle my flooded strands. I'm not going to fetch in response. Yeah, it's like, I feel like Storm will usually have an answer to Emissary, and when they're drawing their deck and going off, they can bounce it. How is Belcher replayable in a blue-white meta? I mean, I think they're more resilient to counterspells than you would expect. But, they, and like, blue-white is, like, largely skipping on Force of Negation, too, but... 
yeah, they you, they they like it oftentimes overwhelm one counter spell, and it's kind of easy for them to for blue white to only have one counter spell early. So hand is Esper Sentinel and Genius Smith re Metallic Rebuke. I really don't like this decision to equip the Shadow Spear here and like just lose the Cauldra. I guess I, I would probably have played the Ingenious Smith. I mean, I guess you're like really not in good shape no matter what though, to be honest. It's a good one. I don't know, this felt like a really weak turn to me. Sodic beat five blue white decks in a row, that's awesome. Sodic is awesome, I really like Sodic a lot. They make changes to this for this league. Uh, no, we made those. We made like the small change of cut the fourth grave for the first courtyard in between, in, in the middle of this league. So if we play another one today, well, it'll be with that. Uh, those changes. <laughs> Two emissaries. Hmm. Maybe four emissaries and then clones, so you can name every single card type. That's got to be an achievement, right? You can probably do that in EDH. Emissary on every single card type. That'd be pretty cool. And then still lose to a uh, verdict. The yeah, right of replication, Sarah's emissary. Opponent decides to let me attack with the Archon of Cruelty. Oh, they discarded the Smith earlier. I missed that. Then they sack my graveyard in response for no reason, no discernible reason. Perhaps just conceding. Okay, let's get that uh, rebuke out of the hands. Mm. A straw that broke the camel's back. I think Emissary is pretty good against Saga Blade. Guess they do have to ferry though. I want the fourth ending. I might want the fourth to fairy. I don't think I want grief. Explosives can be good against them. They have a lot of one mana artifacts and they have saga. I guess we want the explosives. And then probably probably just three to fairy time ravelers on the draw. Maybe the fourth on the play. Right of revocation, emissary drop Avison, Angel of Hope. Okay, then they then how do you beat Terminus? Meddling Mage on Terminus? And then there's there's the five mana terminus with the dragon that's swallowing you up. What's that card called? From Kamigawa block, five mana terminus that you can't miracle. Winds of yeah, winds of abandon. That's right. You have to, um, <laughs> Teague. Okay, hell burial. Yeah. So you so you so you played Teague to be terminus and burial, and then and then you use your meddling mage to name. Winds of Abandon, and then you use Nevermore to name Merciless Eviction. No, no, Teague beats, Teague beats Eviction. So I think I'm actually get, gonna get rights here. Go with my Molly D. I'm also like totally fine with the count of this though. Don't you care? Then you lose to Thoracle, no! <laughs> no, no, Toxic Deluge. Uh. Okay, we can use our Nevermore on Deluge because we didn't use it on the Merciless Eviction. And then we have Torpor Orb in play too to stop Thassa's Oracle. Who is to Out of Time? Uh, yeah, Out of Time gets us. <laughs> out of touch. Out of time. I think I like using my own Teferi here. We don't have very, you know counter spells. We can wait a turn to exile this. Get to bounce the saga to you. Yasharn, okay, yeah, you have Yasharn for Deluge. And then, we are, how do you beat, how do you, we've, used, we've used our Nevermore and our Meddling Mage, how do we beat Out of Time? Quick, I need everybody's brain power on this. And it's, oh, I know it's not that much. But we have to figure this out. Is there, oh, you, we, Gideon's Intervention. Gideon's Intervention on Out of Time. Or yeah, Prelate on three, that works too. 
Oh, Prelude on 3 uh, gives us back our Nevermore. Yeah, Prelude on 3 also gives us back Nevermore. I might just Solitude here. Now you're thinking of Portals chat. Yeah, the Nevermore needs to go on the Cyclonic Rift. I think we may have done it, actually. I think we may have uh, saved EDH from ever ending a game. I'm going to exile this now because of Thought Monitor. Yeah, we already, yeah, we already have Teague in play. <laughs> Sounds pretty fun to, like, like, the goal of your EDH deck. So, and then you have to have angelic intervention right as your win condition or your your draw the game condition but you have to have that in play first but that would be pretty fun just like your win condition is getting to the spot where no one can do anything and then you draw the game i guess it depends on who you ask i'm sure there's tons of people like now that doesn't sound very fun to me spike i don't think that that's fun at all actually i'm kind of offended that you would imply that that is in any way any fun for anybody and to that i say fair point i guess stasis lock is faster and more fun yeah probably <laughs> i don't know oh, eat more fun i don't know <laughs> this seems pretty fun That's Sigarda for sex effects. We already have Yasharn in play. But we'll, we'll put a Sigarda in play too, why not? Get some redundancy. Yeah, I think we're gonna be hard casting some stuff this game. Unfortunately, the rules of magic don't allow you to make infinite meddling mages. Dude, infinite meddling mages naming every single card in magic, that sounds so sick. Now that's fun. Undeniably fun too. Uh, who cares about Cauldra, not me. Yeah, I'm just trying to think how you would make infinite creatures. I guess I guess you can like it's not that hard to cast infinite like right of replications with omniscience and a uh, flicker effect or infinite mana, dead eye navigator, eternal witness, right of replication, meddling mage. That's probably the cleanest way to do it. Twin meddling mage intruder alarm. Okay, now that's that's cleaner. Uh oh, dispatch. Kind of a nightmare. All right, so we're gonna play explosives, pay for Esper Sentinel, pay for Ristic Study, crack the explosives, and then if they suck, well, we're gonna reanimate the Mole Drifter in response to them exiling my graveyard if they don't draw a card. But they just draw a card instead. Which is fine. Now I have instant speed, Mole Drifter plus Ephemerate up here. I might be better just to. Yeah, let's actually go Solitude. Exile both my opponent's creatures. Then in, then reanimate the Muldrifter end of turn. Pretty good turn, huh? Remember when my opponent had non-land of permanence? <laughs> what a game, dude. This has been a good game. Okay, that's a pretty good one. That's a non-land permanent. I guess we get to solitude it with the ephemerate rebound though. No ephemerate rebound for us. Wow, what a game. What a game. 
We also haven't seen an Archon yet. We're like well into Hardcast Archon territory. They bounce the Mole Drifter? Are you kidding? In what world do you bounce the Mole Drifter there? I'm sorry. I st they're like, I just attacked the Teferi with my Solitudes too. They're gonna start off with Mending here. One mana short of Hardcast Archon. Discard Land Mending probably. I think I just cast the Mole Drifter again. Punish for not discarding the Archon. These are these are blue light glasses. Uh, not that I can really I see fine through them, but they, they they don't help me see. They're just like I got like the the ring light here, and I've got the monitor light, so it's just like a bit easier on the eyes. The funniest thing about infinite meddling mages being like like comboing off with infinite mages in this goofy scenario. The funniest thing is that uh, you like actually have to name all the cards, right? You can't, <laughs> you right? Like, yeah, yeah. I think like I, I, you, I, I don't like. What did Judge let you shortcut naming every single card in Magic? Like, what are the do the rules say anything about that? It sounds like we're kind of in the territory where there are no rules. To be honest. Okay, they concede to me cracking the fetch. 2 no in this league, yes. Okay, good to know. I'd allow it. Mm, I'll allow it. But watch yourself. You're on thin ice, EDH player. Uh, I mean, I'm. seems like I'm wrong. There's like 22. I thought that there were so many more. How is it only 22? This is like reprints? I don't know where I got this impression. Okay, well, that, okay, so twenty-two thousand then. Ooh, cool hand. Too bad I'm going to uh, discard every single card here. Scry Falls is twenty-two thousand. It would take 122 hours to name every single card, and then your meddling mages get sacked end of turn. Conservative 15 seconds. Yeah, 15 seconds might be a better estimate. Nerdy thing for six months. You ever draw step ephemerated grief? Hope they drew a spell. Gotta get max value. They did, awesome. <laughs> Pretty dirty. No attack, the grief has summoning sickness because we flickered it. Off the rebound ephemerate. Poor opponent. Although they, they can just put Yorion in their hand here. And they can't just top deck stone for a stick. <laughs> Good Calder. You got a lot of answers to Calder though. We're a Teferi Time Raveler, Archon of Cruelty, Prismatic Ending deck. And Solitude too. At 15 seconds, it only take 91 hours. That's pretty good. Not a bad rate at all. Okay, I'm gonna try to block the stone forge in combat, I think. Plays around it, oh man. Pretty easy to play around, probably. Oh no! Okay, batter skull. 
Oh no. Oh, I probably should have held that for Mending. Although we're getting pretty close to Hardcast Archon. And then they can Yorion pretty soon. <laughs> so I came back Manic Theft with the budgeted CFBs and Barbent list you made. I stole Cauldron to equip onto something. That's awesome. That's really cool. <laughs> what the hell? All literally. <laughs> Grief from Raid's so bad, they just top deck all Stoneforge Mystics. Could have attacked with Grief. I mean, they, they, they have a double block if we attack with Grief. I feel like we don't have good attacks here, right? Because they. I guess we have an okay attack with Grief. If they don't draw a land. Maybe I should just ephemerate the grief. Yeah, I'll just ephemerate the grief, but I'll attack first because it's kind of free. I, if they double block, I'll just ephemerate. Kind of a free attack, right? They don't have anything in hand. Oh, they have this. Oh my gosh, this is such a punt. I don't know why I thought they couldn't put the Sword of Fire Ice at that play. Sorry, chat. I don't know why I was thinking they just couldn't they couldn't do that. Oopsie. Yeah, a bra moment indeed. Pretty embarrassing. Don't the emissary? They probably can't beat emissary, right? I don't know why I was thinking they just couldn't put the Sort of fire ice and hands on next turn. I would have saved ephemerate. Yeah, obviously we shouldn't have cast the ephemerate there. Yeah, we were supposed to. We were supposed to like when they equipped the sort of fire ice, or I guess in combat, uh, exile the the stoneforge mystic attached to it, and then I don't know. We're still pretty behind. Uh, okay, this hand is good, but it has no black mana. But I think I'm supposed to keep. Isn't grief a three two? Mm hmm. I'm not sure what the question is in reference to, but grief is indeed a three two. I never, I never make it make it be clear. I never contested the fact that grief was a three two. Okay, so I think I'll discard. Ephemerate ending. And then if I draw a black source, it's pretty easy. Fatal push them. Okay, cool. Yeah, pretty easy. Fatal push Thalia into untap, persist, unmark grave. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the double block wasn't good for us, I think. Well, a double block was fine because we could maybe solitude a Stoneforge Mystic, but then they get to equip sort of fire ice. It was a hard board state. Okay, so I'm, I'm pretty sure I get Archon first. I don't know. It's like Sarah's Emissary might beat them, but if they have any Path to Exiles in their deck, then we might just be getting, like, no value. Okay, gotta say, didn't expect that. Did not expect that. Should I have? Did anybody in chat suspect that? But everybody in chat did. I mean, Ephemerate's still pretty good at two mana, right? That would make ending cost three. Uh, you, you, ending endings will, will still cost two. Ending, it, if you're familiar with the inter, engineered explosives interaction, it works basically the same. Explosives, Thalia. They sacked the Thalia, so we might be getting pathed. It's not that bad though, we can start casting Mole Drifters. You suspected Containment Priest? Yeah, Priest would have been pretty good. 
I feel like I haven't seen that card. No, I mean, now, now that we've seen Ephemerate, like Priest Ephemerate's a big Nambo. Maybe it's not that big a deal. But it is, kind of, it is kind of interesting to like just like never see Containment Priest in Modern. I, I definitely expected it to be more impactful than it is. Not necessarily super impactful, but more impactful than it's been. All right, now I go to game three. I'm gonna keep this. Might be a Persist Solitude kind of game. Yeah, yeah, priest, priest is awkward to flicker effects. Yeah, so, and yeah, so, it's definitely true. Sanctifier does fill a lot of that, uh, that void. All right, let's main phase push to play around uh, Ephemerate. Yeah, Priest does also stop Vile. Mm -hmm. If you proceed to Containment Priest, does it exile itself? I mean, I, I wouldn't think it would, but... I, I think almost definitely not. <laughs> right, let's just main phase this too again, play around with Ephemerate. How does Thalia and E interact? I thought there was no real effect unless you play zero. Yeah, I mean, that, that is the interaction, right? Like, if you're familiar with how that works. We're gonna get Magust. Good curve, good curve. So we draw basic swamp, we get our emissary back. Guess I could have played around it, but I could also just draw the basic swamp. One in the deck, by the way. One in the deck. Because I have John Solitude. Super whitelisted. Super whitelisted. Yeah, magic is kind of easy sometimes, huh? Just draw the basic swamp, guys. Come on. MTGO Premium. Nice Magus nerd. I'll draw basic planes next turn as well. But it says they've got no answers for that. Awesome. We're 3 0. 3 0. Maybe this is the right version after all. Doesn't the white black fast lane make more sense than Seacrim Coast? Maybe it does. I I I have a. I don't think it really matters. Oh no, yeah, you're right. No, yeah, we have we have the the yeah cyborg black cards. Yeah, we should be. Uh, playing, the courtyards over the coast, and then maybe playing glacier fortresses. I think I keep this on the draw. This hand is just like one land away from being very good, and we have, ending and solitude as interaction. Go to 61. It's honestly not that bad of a suggestion. Tron. Okay, really need to draw the land. Any land will do. Easy. MTGO premium. I mean, I think to play reanimator successfully, premium is really important. <laughs> it is kind of a high variance deck. Prismatic Ending is the best white. Well, it's not a blue-white spell. It's just a white spell, right? You can maybe argue that it's not. Disaster. Absolute disaster. Ah. Dude, we're so freaking whitelisted today. I can't believe it. <laughs> Let's go. Every draw step perfect for all for like for this entire league, I feel. <laughs> I mean that's why the endings are so important, for sure. Yeah, let's let's start to draw a little bit more reasonably, huh? Nope. That's a pretty good one too. You're gonna get tron anyway, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Oh, we're getting spatial contortioned. Okay, or or being whaled rather. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. If Karn, O Stone, it's fine. I definitely want to main phase this. So if we draw Archon, we can just immediately persist. 
Um, I think we discard the solitude. And we can persist the mole drifter. Yikes. I guess we have uh, mending to loot some of these lands away. I could draws here. Ephemerate would be pretty sick. Okay, so we can write to our Archon next turn, flash it back after they Oblivion Stone. If they find Graveyard Hate this turn, though, it's pretty bad. Basic Force might unlock Green Tutor. They can also have a second copy of Warping Whale. Oh, dude. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. I suppose I should attack first. Why did they take a bus of card looting and reprint it in blue? Um, I mean, blue's been getting a lot of good stuff lately. Let's not discount that. But um, the reality is that Wizards has talked about how they think that looting was like never should have been a red card. They like they've started to like only give blue looting, and then they give red either the rummage effect where they discard first or they uh or you you exile the card then play it that's how they want to do red's card selection spells from now on uh regardless of if you agree with that or not that's just that's just how they're doing it now right and so like uh, like a lot of people even like at the time wrote about faithless looting being a color pie break at the time and i think that you could even make a pretty good case that it was um obviously it's a really small Small thing that doesn't matter all that much. So I can ephemerate the Archon now. I don't think I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, blue, yeah, blue had careful study first, which is blue faithful studying with no flashback. Um, and then you could also make so it's it's kind of interesting. Like in in a stride, you had faithful studying, which probably should have been a blue card, and then you had Snapcaster Mage, which probably should have been a red card. And it's kind of like like if those how imagine how different uh, magic as a, magic would be if they if those if, if Snapcaster was red and then uh, looting was blue, the whole game is so different. You know, it's really interesting to me. Give her a draw step, ephemerate, and archon of cruelty. I think Snapcaster feels blue. If cast for free, it would be red. Uh, I don't know. I feel like casting until end of turn feels a little more red. I don't know. It's a little arbitrary. Uh, but, th I mean, they've also said that they feel like Snapcaster should have been more of a red card. I feel like it feels a little more red to me. It's obviously kind of close. Do you think with just Archon and Drifter you can play Ephemerate? I think you need more uh, Ephemerate ephemeratable spells like 15 like we're playing now is kind of close to the minimum for four ephemerate um okay so i'm gonna bring in the four copies of thought seize the fourth ending i'm gonna cut the solitudes and second rights maybe third to fairy i guess i'll keep third to fairy Snapcaster with haste instead of flash and being red. Hmm. Be really interesting. The fact that it was an MTG champion pushed blue red. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I forgot it was Tygo. It was like, I always forget Snapcaster Mage is one of the invitational cards. Go down on Ephemerate. I um, mean, Ephemerate Grief is still really strong, but yeah, maybe we should. So I take a thing for the 16 months. I think I'm gonna leave him in, but yeah, that you that you make a good case for trimming an ephemerate. Maybe on the play, I'll play third to fairy. Just so bad on the draw. Get some water. <clears throat> Let's go. Let's go. What a hand. Son of water, I'm gonna finish off some kvass, which is a Russian wheat beer that uh, Esther's mom buys for me. And Esther hates it, but I like it. 
I'm sorry, it's not beer, it's soda. It's not beer. Too early for me. <laughs> I know I said beer. <laughs> Stop. Please believe me. Is she Russian? Her family's from Azerbaijan, um, which used to be part of the Soviet Union, and her parents grew up in the Soviet Union until her dad uh, got on an airplane and then didn't get off. <laughs> and then just didn't get off. I'll take the second star. Mellow Robot, thank you for the four months. Appreciate you. Yeah, it's a little early for me. And I'm gonna do some writing tonight. Like, I, I used to, like, really enjoy beer, like, right after the stream. I used to, like, like shower beer uh, right after the stream. But if I, like, drink a beer in the afternoon, like, my writing for Channel Fireball really suffers. So they've got Tron. You're going to Baku in two weeks for work? Is that part of Azerbaijan? I'm honestly, you know, not super duper familiar with everything there. Did he die? Uh, no, he okay. He did. He he got off the plane. Sorry, he didn't. Never get off the plane. He worked for the Azerbaijan Airlines and. Uh, they, they stopped here in Texas, and he wasn't supposed to stay here, but he, and things were, like, the Soviet Union was kind of collapsing, so he stayed here and got amnesty, and now has a beautiful family, and has brought me my, my beautiful darling Esther. What does it taste like? Uh, I don't know, I'm pretty bad at describing tastes. No land there, it feels bad. Okay, I know I make up a lot of stories about how I met Esther, but this story about Esther's dad is actually true. But I, I know I have not a super duper reliable narrator when it comes to stories about Esther. So maybe I should draw step this ephemerate. It's kind of close. I think I'm feeling this one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Every Esther lore story, she she loses a job, which isn't actually connected to the truth. The truth about how me and Esther met is really, really boring. It's you know you know those like apps where you can like talk to your neighbors and stuff. Well, uh, I was on the app trying to get my neighbor to turn their music down, and then she was on the app trying to get me to pick up my dog poop, or get, to get someone pick up their dog poop, and then we found out that, uh, we found out that uh, we were talking to each other, and then um, we ended up meeting in a parking lot to uh, fist fight, but we ended up falling in love instead. It's kind of funny how these things work out, right? It's just always finding it in spots where you least expect it. And we still actually um, find people on that app to fist fight to this day. <laughs> yeah, by challenging her to a duel at dawn. So the golf pro story was fake? Yeah, this was the real one. Okay, well, uh, I guess we win. I don't know what they can possibly have. Alright, let's get a uh, prediction going, chat. Let's I got a trophy yesterday uh, with the reclamation deck. Maybe we can. We're not gonna win. We're not gonna be leader of the season, but maybe we could have a solid finish, huh? I'll keep this. Here we're gonna pitch an archon. Hand does need to draw lands. We're on the draw though. 
Yeah, they treat their employees so bad. I've got a lot of friends who've worked for GameStop and have really been treated horribly. Yo, basic planes, counter spell charm. Both hands kind of awkward. Am I trying to resell a PS5? Just go. I'm trying to buy a PS5. Uh, I, and I don't want to buy one from a scalper. I look. I did. I did. To be honest, like consider it, but I gotta stick to my values. Great draw. So I guess if anybody can hook me up. I don't know. Do I really want to use my streamer powers for evil and get a PS5? Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they also treat their customers poorly. And it, it honestly, like, it, it's always frustrated me that, like, I, I don't know. Like, obviously, like, I do, I did enjoy the, like, the big, the big hedge firms getting boned by uh, the whole GameStop buyout stuff. But I didn't love how, like, GameStop is, like, a, a, a really poor company that got ended up getting, like, incidentally bailed out for no real reason. I think I like bouncing the grief here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I remember Hob was able to do it, too. PlayStation Direct Sight. Are they restocked right now? Oh, I should have left a white mana for Ephemerate. Uh, I guess I'll grave the second rights here. No, I should put another Archon in the yard because I have the rights at hand, though. Yeah, obviously there are good people working at GameStop, but there's just some... I don't know. I, I don't... I, I'll also say I'm not, like, super strongly invested in the, uh... Plights of GameStop. I just prefer not to do business with them because I don't think they're a good company. Okay, we're up a game. Our drawing wall continues to be pretty good. Sorry for rambling so much all the time and uh, never stopping. Uh, I'm going to, I think, just trim an Archon, cut the Solitudes, fourth Ephemerate when I cut the Solitudes. Fourth to Fairy, fourth ending. Just because the company's stock starts trading at high prices doesn't mean the company starts receiving more revenue profit. Okay, that's not so. That I was under the impression that GameStop was really profiting from the stock going up, uh, but I guess that kind of shows how I don't really know anything, huh? Uh, I, that might have sounded sarcastic. That's genuine. I like that's news to me that they want to be making more money, uh, but yeah, those. I, I guess if, if that's if they don't if they're not making more money from it, then it just ultimately sounds like a great deal. Happy to hear it. Um, let's keep this and draw a uh, mending, huh? Put it to multi six. <laughs> okay, I'll just I'll just start talking about things I actually know about, which is Naruto lore and uh, magic. If I, I think if I draw a grief uh, off the mending, I will immediately cast it to get that to fairy. So I'm gonna main phase this. I have an idea for it. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't say anything. Never mind. Never mind. <clears throat> it wasn't interesting, anyways. So they definitely drew counter magic. Do you think Solitude is the best card of Modern? Uh, I'd say it's 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 really, really good, Ronin. Like, the last few weeks, it really, I think, has been a big breakout card, absolutely. Uh, would I say it's the best card? Yes, absolutely, 100%. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. It's kind of hard to quantify best card, right? Everything's so contextual and changes so fast. But it's it's really good, and it's it's one of the best cards right now, for sure. No, Lightning Bolt kind of sucks. I don't know. People always say Bolt's the most played card. It must be the best. But Bolt is like... 
not good against a lot of decks in the format and is worse than like I think is a worse card than like Unholy Heat Prismatic Ending in the metagame right now. But like I don't know. I think that's just kind of like the I think players in, in modern tend to have like a level up moment then they realize that Bolt is just is not just always the best card in modern, you know. All right, so their hand is I think Counterspell Prismatic Ending. They know we know about the ending. Um, what? They plus and they didn't have Counterspell? I guess this is just like a sick bluff. Yeah, you board out Bolt against a lot. Of, I, I, yeah, you board out Bolt all the time. Yeah, yeah, the Bolt is obviously a very good card. It's one. It's it's in the conversation, but it, I, it's just not the best card in the format. Uh, also, we five would and we didn't talk about the match like the entire time for the five O match. But that's just because it's a little too free for the bean, huh? Just a little too free for the bean. Deck felt pretty good. It's our second league with this deck today. I I I do think I'm gonna run it back. Um, although I might I might go back down to 21 lands. Let's open our chest. Get 110 play points. Leyline, Knight of the Ebon Legion. I remember I used when I was first getting into Magic. I thought Jace Memory Adept was just so broken. All right, let me let me cut the second Glacial Fortress and then go back up. I think I think.